Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham Chris here with yet another machine to look at. Another ThinkPad from the Lenovo saga of ThinkPads. So this model here we look at is yet another large beast here, another 15.6 inch machine. This would be a ThinkPad T520. This would be for the Core i series machines, a second generation processor. So you could have had actually anywhere from on the low end an i3-2310M all the way up to an i7-2820QM processor, which was a quad core 2.3 gigahertz. Pretty powerful. Uh, I think actually probably the most powerful or the most popular processors at the time would have either been the i5-2540 or the i7-2620 because those were the highest... Uh, thread counts at 2.6 and 2.7 gigahertz uh, frequency count, sorry, but those were only dual core processors. So I guess your mileage would vary depending on what type of processing you were needing to do, either higher frequency or wanting to get multi-threading, which I think this was like 2007 or 2008. So, um, or 2000, not 2004, 2004, 2012, 2012, maybe. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at this one, front end of the system, pretty generic, uh, bottom end here, we've got our hard drive space here, hard drives, uh, at, again at the time, pretty common that you would just have a SATA hard drive in here, so you'd have a, a uh, 250 to 500 gig SATA drive, there were going to be some options as well for solid state drives, because at the same time that these were out, there were slimline ThinkPads that you were using 1.8 inch SSDs, uh, that would have an adapter to fit in here as well, and then memory, you open up this panel here, you have access to one DIMM, and then if you remove a couple more screws, you could take the keyboard out from the other side and have access to the second DIMM. Mechanical docking, battery of course, we've got the big battery here. There was a slimline battery for this, and then if I remember correctly, although I haven't seen it for a while, there was a big chunker battery here that would you couldn't dock, but um, would allow you to be able to do that. So I've mentioned that before, I think. Um, looking at the back here, no modem. Right, so this shared the case with the previous model T510, but modems were no longer part of the, the build design, so it's just blocked out now. You've still got a powered USB port in the back here, barrel port. Uh, you've got your fins here for, for cooling. So these are open now on, on some of the previous models or lower end models, this would be, uh, there wouldn't be the fins on the back. So this is open for cooling, and then of course open for cooling on this side as well. Then we've got our, uh, Display port, VGA, some USB ports, an eSATA port, and then we've got still FireWire connectivity, mechanical Wi-Fi, a smart card reader capability, which I don't think there's one in this unit, but for security purposes, uh, if you were in like the medical field or whatever, um, that would be something that would be getting used quite often. Uh, SD card reader, express card port available as well, uh, multi-burner in the enhanced Ultra Bay, and then Ethernet connectivity, and of course the old Kensington lock. And then if we open up this system, we've got uh, some familiar sights here. The seven row keyboard, a fingerprint reader, the ultra nav, which was the combination of the glorious track point, as well as a touchpad with their, all their own separate buttons. And then we'll get this baby powered up and take a look at what it actually had for performance capability. So I'm going to plug in the power just in case the battery on this is a little low. We're going to shoot up the camera move the light aside a little bit there were three different screens available for this system as well um, as as with the previous model t510 so you could have the lowest end 1366 by 768 then there was a 900p and a 1080p uh, both the 768 and 900p were only 230 nits and then the 1080p was a modest <laughs> 270 nits at the time that was actually pretty decent Obviously, when we're talking about 500, 600 nit screens today is a far cry, um, but at the time, a number of years ago, that was something that was pretty, pretty decent. Um, as far as memory goes on this one, it's still, again, a maximum um, of two memory DIMMs on here. However, the next generation of i-series uh, Core i processors on here did support more memory capability, so you could actually get a pair of 8 gig DIMMs in this for up to 16 gig of memory, which is pretty good. Pretty good indeed. I'm gonna wait for this uh, camera to decide that it wants to focus on the screen a little bit better. Maybe we'll move a little bit closer and that'll help out a bit. Okay, let's open up the task manager and we'll show some of the components here. 
So as I noted, there was a number of different processors available here. This model has an i5-2520M. So this is a dual core, 2.5 gigahertz. It's not the lowest end. There was, as I mentioned, you could go all the way down to an i3-2310M, and it's not the lowest i5. There was a 2410M. But again, the 2540 was a 2.6 gigahertz, and the 2620 was a 2.7 gigahertz processor, dual core. And then you could go, uh, sorry, i7-2620M was a 2.7 inch dual gigahertz dual core, which is pretty decent. But again, this isn't terrible, right? 2.5 gigahertz, two cores, four, uh, four processors, uh, four threads, I mean, is pretty decent. Memory-wise, again, I've got four gig of DDR3 installed, and you can actually get this upwards of, right, if you can get those, those eight gig DDR3 DIMMs still, you can get up to 16 gig of memory in this thing. Disk-wise, it's just a standard uh, SATA hard drive, right? Uh, 160 gig SATA hard drive that's in here, pretty low end. Um, but it's SATA, so you could put an SSD in here pretty easily. And then what's great about this model is this doesn't have its... Well, of course, it's going to have the Intel graphics. It's got the USG graphics, but it also has the discrete video card. This has got an NVS 4200 with one gig of memory. Um, now, obviously, that's not great for today's perspective, but having that discrete video card is really important for... Uh, older machines or any machine really when it comes to shared graphics when you have a lower amount of memory in the system because I don't have to share any of that memory to run the Intel graphics card. Uh, this will be running in hybrid mode. I didn't go into the BIOS and make any changes to disable anything so it will be using the Intel graphics and then switching over to the NVIDIA graphics when needed. Uh, you will have the ability of course if you install the NVIDIA control panel to go and make changes and tell it to force use the NVIDIA graphics card whenever possible. So that's something that obviously can be done, and I would I would highly recommend it because um, with an older system like this, you're probably not going to be spending a ton of time running on battery power anyway, unless you're going to go and order a, an aftermarket used battery for it, which means you know the battery that's on this is going to maybe last 20, 30 minutes on on power saving anyway. You're probably not going to be wanting to try to play video games or do any high graphics content on this thing unless you're plugged in. So you might as well force use the, the NVIDIA graphics card and take advantage of that discrete performance to begin with. Yeah, so that's it for this model here. Uh, pretty good uh, pretty good design, nice sturdy machine. A fair amount of upgradability. Um, I'm pretty sure that everything that you can do with like a T420, almost everything you can also do to the T520. Um, there's a couple things obviously we'd want to take advantage of doing with this is, is trying to find the faster processor that's available for this. Um, it's got the 16 by 900 screen on this, which is the mid-range. You know, maybe you want to try and find one of those 1080p screens to get the best resolution and best nit count available. Uh, memory upgrades and an SSD would, would really go a long way to help this. And of course, we've got our ThinkLight here, which is something that you always want to take advantage of when you've got it for one of these older ThinkPads. So I hope you enjoyed this little tour down memory lane. If you had a T520, um, as I always say with these ThinkPads, if you have recommendations for great mods and upgrades that are perfect for this uh, series of ThinkPad, please put them in the comments below with links and whatever it is uh, that you want to do is, uh, is always helpful and always cool. Hope you're staying safe and healthy, and we will catch you in the next one.